हेलो इज एनीबडी लिस्निंग कैन यू प्लीज मेक मी द होस्ट बिकॉज आई विल हैव टू शो सम अ पावर पॉइंट प्रेजेंटेशन स्क्रीन सर आई मेक हाँ जी होस्ट टू शेयर ऑल दिस थिंग्स अच्छा तो उनको मैं एडमिन बना दू क्या वो कर पाएंगे ना उनको मैं एडमिन बना दे पेज का एक एक काम कीजिए ना उनको आप उनको कोई प्रॉब्लम ना हो हेलो 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 सर Have I been made the co-host? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Shabana sir, uh, this is uh, Sambit. Uh, Sambit uh, S. Mandal from Asansol Engineering College. Yeah, I will be please. host. I will be hosting uh, today's uh, meeting, right? Okay. I'll be I I'll be the person who will be interacting with you. Okay. And uh, others, if anyone want to interact, they will interact with me, and then I will. Please, uh, every everyone, uh, those who are uh, talking, please you can uh, keep uh, your uh, microphone muted. once the participation crosses 100 we will start the program okay no problem <laughs> it's 83 right now yeah yeah <laughs> 17 short of a century yeah 17 short, short of a century
it's uh, 99 it's 100 okay with the permission uh, from uh, the higher authorities uh, let me start the program a civil engineer by a profession an author by a passion shot to fame with uh, pentacles with one long story and uh, four short poems frosted glass with uh, 14 so stories and 21 poems abyss a full length play winter poems random subterranean mosaic 2012 to 2018 and etchings of the first quarter of 2020 a jadavpur university first class pass out he is the senior vice president at the electrosteel casting group and is in his 25th year he looks after applications technology strategy apart from a business development at the electrosteel casting group his feathers in the hat includes literoma literature award in 2019 literoma a star achiever award in 2020 Random a Subterranean Mosaic, 2012 to 2018, won the best book of the year in 2019 from salismania.com. Presently, etching of the first quarter of 2020 is the best seller number one on Amazon. His other books have been critically acclaimed as a best seller. He is a Goodreads author with present rating of 4.05 with reviews and ratings in excess of 1000 and on Amazon, he is rated between four to five with reviews and ratings in excess of 500. He has a technical book published by Scholars Peers, Scholars Press in European Union with two of his co-authors, which have been translated into eight major European languages. He was an invited speaker on the opening day at the Noida International Literary Festival 2019 and a panelist at the Tata Still Literary Meet on the opening day at a session with which discussed the dark side of the mind. He has also been visited various national and international conferences to talk on various matters concerning ecology and environment. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting Mr. Shaborn Roy, the wizardous wordsmith, in the masterclass presented by Idea O Meter, powered by JS Group Educational Institute initiatives hosted by Asansol Engineering College, a joint venture of JS and Techno India Group. This is Sambhidas Mandal, Assistant Professor, Asansol Engineering College, on behalf of the entire organizing team. Welcome, Mr. Roy, to the Masterclass, the 4th September 2020. Mr. Saborno Roy. Sir. Thank you uh, so much, Mr. Shombit Mondol uh, and your team. And of course, uh, I have to thank uh, GIS and Techno India Group for hosting me in this program on technology, management, creative and critical thinking. Uh, I have made a small PowerPoint presentation that I'll share on screen and uh, gradually read it out for the benefit of the audience. I do not think that will take me more than 25 minutes to read out and discuss. And after that, we can have a question answer session along with the audience and, uh, and an interaction session, a fruitful discussion. And thereafter, whenever you would like to conclude, we can conclude. So can I share the screen with my presentation now? Yes, sir, you can. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it is visible. Okay, thank you. Is the presentation visible to everybody? It is visible to me. Okay. 
Yes, sir. It is visible to everyone. Okay. So basically, the uh, what we will be discussing today is uh, the interdisciplinary discussion of technology management, creative and critical thinking. Now, on the right hand side, the bottom part of the screen, we show you an outline of the human brain. Right. The left side of the human brain, brain is uh, colored in blue and the right side of the human brain is colored in burnt orange. If you see carefully all the icons and symbols entrapped within the human brain, it actually covers technology, management, meaning people and non-people issues, creative and critical thinking. Now, what we will be discussing today is an overview of the overall presentation, a model of critical and creative thinking, idea generation, reflective judgment, self-regulation, attitudes and dispositions, and a case study specific to the IT sector where we will discuss how to think differently, thinking about systems, critical thinking in context and a critical approach. Now, let us come to the uh, overview. Now, in a, we have to admit that uh, the United States of America is much ahead of all the nations in interdisciplinary learning. In a recent report on skills of the American workforce, the National Center on Education and the Economy stressed the importance of students gaining skills beyond mere content knowledge. They state, Strong skills in English, mathematics, technology and science, as well as literature, history and the arts will be essential for many. Beyond this, candidates will have to be comfortable with ideas and abstractions, good at both analysis and synthesis, creative and innovative, self-disciplined and well-organized, able to learn very quickly and work well as a team, as a member of a team and have the flexibility to adapt uh, quickly to frequent changes in the labor markets as the shifts in the economy become ever faster and more dramatic. As such, uh, the National Education Technology Standards for Students emphasize, one, creativity and innovation, two, communication and collaboration, three, research and information fluency, four, critical thinking, problem solving, and decision making, five, digital citizenship, and six, technology operations and concepts. These standards are quite different than those established in 1998 in the USA, which had an emphasis on one, basic operations and concepts, two, social, ethical, and human issues, three, technology productivity tools, four, technology communication tools, five, technology research school tools, and six, technology problem solving and decision making tools. Now we uh, continue with the overview and in this slide, in the next slide, we will end with the overview. In uh, 
comparing the two versions of the technology standards that I have presented before you in the, uh, in the earlier slide, it is clear that the shift has been made from simply teaching students how to operate technology to using technology to encourage problem solving, innovation, and collaboration. But how do we develop students who are critical and creative thinkers able to meet the challenges of 21st century thinking, learning, and doing? For example, it was understood <coughs> that to be creative, one must be clever. But uh, what does it mean to be clever? And how can you teach someone to be clever? If we simply listed clever as a characteristic of a critical and creative thinker, what could an educator do with that information? Recognizing this, this issue, the goal of any relevant research is to practically define critical and creative thinking by identifying a set of specific skills that contribute to such thinking and are teachable within any classroom. In the present slide, we will try to develop a model of critical and creative thinking. We have come to recognize that critical and creative thinking is an integrated process. This is very important. It is an integrated process that involves the generation and refinement of ideas around the core of knowledge. The idea generation and refinement processes are monitored and controlled by self-regulatory behaviors that involve goal setting as well as monitoring and obtainment of those goals, all while maintaining the necessary attitudes and dispositions. The relationship between these uh, processes is in no way linear. The continuous reciprocal relationship between idea generation and reflective judgment shows that there is no specific beginning or end to the thinking process. This is very important. Human thinking process has neither any beginning nor any end. As ideas are generated, thinkers work with what they know and or want to know to refine their ideas until they have something of value and worth. The movement between generating and refining ideas involves thinkers using analytical and evaluative measures to focus their understanding of the content and developing an outcome that most clearly and comprehensively addresses the identified problem or need. As the thinker uh, works to generate and refine knowledge, it is vital that he or she remains in control of both behavior and commitment to a task. The self-regulation component of the critical and creative thinking process ensures that the thinker remains active in the thinking and learning process while monitoring progress toward identified goals. A critical component that encompasses all other processes is the exhibition of appropriate attitudes and dispositions, sometimes referred to as learner characteristics, the essential attitudes and dispositions of motivation, flexibility, and confidence have been shown to be necessary for the development of and continuous involvement in critical and creative thinking. Uh, let us discuss uh, what do we actually mean by idea generation when we say idea generation. A key process of uh, critical and creative thinking is that of idea generation. This is referred to as uh, productive thinking, where the thinker engages in activities encouraging 
the divergent process of taking previously acquired knowledge, simple ideas, and new information and transforming those ideas into something that can be applied to a new situation or problem. The process of idea generation is supported by thinkers exhibiting skills such as fluency of ideas, originality of thought, and flexibility in thinking. Now we'll try to understand what we actually mean by reflective judgment. In the reflective judgment component of critical and creative thinking, thinkers move through a convergent process of evaluating ideas and selecting a structured plan or solution based on the multitude of previously generated ideas as they engage in reflective judgment. Thinkers not only evaluate and select ideas from those generated through personal knowledge and experience, but also in the consideration of ideas gained through analysis and evaluation of other thinkers' ideas and resources. By combining such ideas, thinkers will determine the best and most feasible plan to pursue. Now, the next two things, uh, self-regulation and attitudes and dispositions, we will understand in a bit greater detail as uh, sometimes they are a bit difficult to understand. Throughout the processes of generating and refining ideas, thinkers must monitor and maintain control of their thoughts, behaviors, and involvement. The skills within this self-regulative process are organized by how the learners set personal goals and plan how they will accomplish their goals, monitor attention, focus, and progress, and evaluate the process and results of their activities. Critical and creative thinkers engage in active planning and forethought to set goals, outline strategies, and determine the best methods through which they can achieve their goals. Activities that support this planning include recognizing the existence of a challenge, assessing personal knowledge, understanding one's own abilities, and allocating resources. Thinkers also must be skillful. Thinkers also must be skillful in monitoring the attention and focus they devote to a task as well as the results of their decisions. This occurs through actively focusing on the level and type of attention required to accomplish the task. In addition, they need to be aware of how they're performing and progressing toward meeting their goals. Monitoring also involves identifying consequences of possible actions in relation to their desired goals. Revising is a critical component of self-regulation if through monitoring focus, performance, progress, and possible consequences, thinkers find that they are not making adequate progress toward achieving their goals, they must be willing to reconsider their course of action. As uh, thinkers continually monitor their attention, focus, and results, it may become necessary for them to make changes in beliefs about their level of attention, abilities, and the value of contributions being made this process of cognitive restructuring occurs as thinkers make affirmative changes in their overall attitudes and seek to make alterations in personal beliefs and perceptions of the beliefs of others. Thinkers can uh, accomplish this restructuring by making positive self-statements to help maintain awareness of such beliefs and make 
necessary changes. Third and final skill of self-regulation is the need for thinkers to evaluate the results of their efforts. This occurs as the thinkers review the initial challenge, their goals, and the resulting products. By evaluating results, thinkers can ensure appropriate outcomes as well as value and worth of ideas as they relate to the problem or context. Through evaluating the process in which they engaged, critical and creative thinkers ensure that appropriate thinking processes were used to generate results. results. Through evaluating the product, they ensure that those final results are in line with the initial goal. Now, before discussing the case study, we come to uh, the final discussion on attitudes and disposition. Uh, this also is very significant because of which uh, um, we will uh, discuss in greater detail. In addition to engaging in idea generation, reflective judgment and self-regulation, creative and critical thinkers must exhibit certain attitudes and dispositions. Specifically, this means they must be perceptive and flexible, motivated and confident. Thinkers maintain a perceptive and flexible attitude through avoiding impulsivity, rejecting stereotypes and prejudices, embracing multiple points of view, judging their assumptions and remaining sensitive to the thoughts and actions of others. In addition, it is vital that thinkers allow many aspects of experiences to penetrate and influence their thinking by remaining open-minded to seeking alternative influences. Tolerating ambiguity, this is very important, tolerating ambiguity or amphibiousness is also essential as with any thinking process, vaguely established ideas will often penetrate their thinking. Critical and creative thinkers must be motivated to solve the problem at hand. They must exhibit a general interest in their learning, recognize the value of their participation, and see the applicability of the task to their personal interests. This motivation is exhibited to demonstrating autonomy, persisting at the task, maintaining intrinsic motivation, and recognizing the relevance of their work to their personal interests. Successful critical and creative thinkers are also confident in their involvement and position within the problem or context. In this context, Confidence involves uh, maintaining a positive perception of self-efficacy, exhibiting a high level of comfort in interacting with the thinking process, and exhibiting a general feeling of self-worth and certainty. Thinkers who do not fear being different and do not seek conformity are able to maintain high levels of confidence and become active participants in the creative and critical thinking process. Throughout successful critical and creative thinkers demonstrate confidence by actively identifying the worth or applicability of their ideas, exist, exhibiting courage of convictions that allows them to publicize their thoughts without fear of rejection and the willingness to engage in risk-taking that allows them to work outside their comfort zone and engage in tasks in which success is not certain. Now we come to a discussion on a specific case study related to the IT industry. I hope a lot of IT and computer science engineering students are 
in this uh, in the audience although i am a civil engineer i keep a very active interest in the it industry and the developments taking place all across the world in computer science engineering because of which i am presenting this case study and also because uh, the information technology industry is the fastest changing revolutionizing industry uh, among all the industries that we have and is creating a marvelous impact on other industries as well now a criticism often leveled at it education is that by the time you come to apply the skills they might be out of date why learn technology skills when that technology might not be in use in a couple of years well uh, it does change fast but the fundamentals of how we design and build systems change at a slower pace as long as we learn about today's technology in the context of how it relates to the business world and how it is likely to evolve then we will be in a much better position to respond intelligently to the changing world but this is often overlooked by both formal and in house training programmers which have favored skills which address very specific challenges in order to be adequately prepared to tackle tomorrow's technology changes we need to move from a mindset of knowing how to apply technology to well understood situations to one of being able to think critically about problems and identify solutions to unknown as well as familiar technology technology issues i call this uh, think differently to prepare it professionals for that matter any kind of a professional for the rapidly changing world of technology we need to install an approach based on critical thinking i look at how we might do this before putting this approach in context the organization like the college or whatever organization one is working in you work is in is complex it is shaped by the nature of individual thinking processes as well as existing technology and business pressures any changes will have causes and consequences that may have a much wider impact solving a problem will change things which could lead to other problems different people see different priorities there is sometimes no obvious answer or many different reasonable answers but that there are but there are also wrong answers which can be pursued sometimes at great cost these often result from a very narrow focus on the problem out of context interconnections are too often ignored a single cause may be presumed or an individual quickly blamed this is not exclusive to it we see this in wider society all the time it's easier to blame crime on individual criminals than deal with the many complex societal factors that lead that led some to criminality the other mistake is a focus on outcomes that is how many criminals can we arrest rather than how many crimes can we prevent to avoid these mistakes problems should be approached by thinking about the systems that affect the challenge or opportunity this is more difficult than isolating and addressing a problem but ultimately more likely to produce a better solution this i call think about systems as well as looking at how technology works it is necessary to think about how people will react to it is it great new technology too hard to learn will tough new security procedures incentivize people to circumvent it circumvent them we need to understand the systems in which new technology operates cognitive mapping that is uh, 
mapping with knowledge of oneself is a technique for understanding and shaping the mental models your stakeholders use to perceive, contextualize, simplify, and make sense of otherwise complex problems. Thinking through these will help ensure new technologies and programs have the results they are supposed to. However good your plan is, is you won't foresee everything. So it is also critical to continuously test and review and feed that learning into your ever evolving plans. Throughout the life cycle of any project, topics such as stakeholders, finance, risk, people, project administration and quality must be constantly reviewed in the context of the project. The world of the future will require more understanding of flexible management. We will have to place more emphasis on learning as we go and making sure that learning changes our practice and organizations. We need to get used to this. In the case study, I call this part critical thinking in context. Two core skills of any modern IT professional or engineer, both relate to complex real world challenges and can only be dealt with effectively if they think critically. First, cybersecurity. Any IT professional needs to fully explore the available security technologies and stay up to date with them. But they also need to think through the risks that may arise in all relevant aspects of an organization's operations, which may impact security, including human factors web services, and system upgrades. You also need to be able to plan for when things do go wrong. Again, this needs an understanding of attackers' motivations and employee weaknesses, as well as of the technologies available to circumvent your defenses and a sense of how these could evolve. It also requires an understanding of the legal frameworks and technologies relevant to digital forensics, which are essential when responding to cyber security incidents. Only, they can effective, only then can effective plans be made. Teaching all this must be put in real world context. Most students learn these techniques by crafting a fit for purpose information security management system for the organization where they work. Secondly, software engineering. Contact between the business and the external world is often mediated by software. And the business has a responsibility to its wider community that may be served or jeopardized by the software. Skilled software engineers can add a lot of value by creating or adapting software from managing projects and sales, analyzing performance and customer data, and automating tasks. All of this exists in a complex real world where humans react to change in different ways. Any new system must understand how users or customers will respond to it. The skill, uh, of course, is not one of knowing how to do this. It is one of knowing how to model the relationships between the software, the organization it serves, and its wider environment. This approach must be used in development, rollout, updates, and maintenance. It is an evolving process. Critical thinking doesn't mean ignoring technology, of course. The process can be evolved further by understanding of different software engineering tools that can help them simulate, manage, and monitor. Using these effectively is part of the skill of good IT planning. Uh, the, we come to the last part. Uh, a critical approach allows you to plan effectively. IT is critical to business and will become ever more so. It exists in an increasingly networked and interconnected world where groups, teams, organizations, and even nations 
will have to be smarter in their ways of working together. IT professionals therefore need to be able to think in ways that reflect these challenges. IT education at all levels must teach how to take a criminal approach, a critical approach, which relates technical competences to complex technological, human, and business issues. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Shabono, uh, Mr. Shabono Roy. Uh, anybody yeah, is having, yeah. If anyone is having any question, you can uh, write your question uh, to the chat box so that I can uh, read it out for Mr. Roy. If anyone is having any question. Anybody have uh, written anything in the chat box? It's empty yet. Uh, probably everything is clear to everyone. Uh, so the, the three aspects of uh, critical thinking, whatever we have learned from you, sir, is idea generation, reflective judgment, and uh, self-regulation. I was uh, thinking one thing that uh, an image of the thinker was missing in that slide. The, the thinker by uh, Auguste Rodin would have added a spice to, to these uh, slides. Uh, anyway, it was uh, nice nice uh, to hear all those things. It's a critical thinking. Is a, I mean, so it's, it's just uh, using the technology and uh, the human thinking power and uh, advancement of technology, then uh, getting to the goal with the technology is all about that thing. Uh, now, uh, let us uh, ask you a few questions apart from the topic, as uh, we have uh, got a person like you who has uh, got a, a, a work, who is being, have been working in various uh, versatile fields of, of, uh, of the life. Uh, first of all, I would like to request you to take us through your uh, journey to the success uh, as an engineer or, and as an, as an author of the books, uh, as a professional, and as a, as, as a, from your professional side of uh, point of view and a passion point of view, both the views I want to know about your success story. Sir, if you please. Yeah, frankly, you see today, uh, I consider that uh, I have two professions as a senior engineering professional, also as an author, because uh, frankly speaking, I'm earning from both the fields, so I'm a professional in both the fields. First of all, I love... Uh, yeah, it, it costed 48 rupees, I know 48 uh, for me to buy Abyss uh, uh, last evening. <laughs> Just on the lighter side. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, the point is, uh, mm, uh, you know, I mean, uh, I don't do things that I don't love. I love engineering very passionately. I love managing people. I love technology. And uh, I also love writing for the simple reason that writing is the only thing that I can do. I can't play any instrument. I can't uh, sing. Or I can I don't have talent other than writing. Yeah, I I'm not saying that I'm very talented. I'm only saying that yes, I think I can write. I have that con I have this confidence that I can write. So, if you ask me journey, I don't think uh, one consciously makes a journey. You know, one one travels along path in the initial years of my career. The first six, seven years, I changed a lot of jobs and then I settled in electro steel castings, 
could be because uh, I got the kind of exposure and I got the kind of peace and calm and comfort where I could work freely and uh, comfortably and also judiciously. So I settled in a career. I made a career in Electro Steel Castings Limited because 25 years is a long journey. I started writing very seriously in 2007. My first book, the manuscript of my book was ready by 2008. But the first uh, book was published in 2010 because uh, um, two years was a long struggle in getting a proper publisher and getting my book published. I had to convince a publisher. I had to convince the chief editor of a publisher. So it took a lot of time, at least two years for me. So after 2010, I continuously published books. And from 2010 to 2020, I have produced six literary works. So yeah, I feel I have not written anything uh, that I do not know. Whatever I have written, I know closely. Somehow the books have clicked. They have been successful, uh, thanks to my readers. And it is also because uh, some of the readers have felt, have, un but to me, you know, success also means that when somebody understands the core of your work, the core value of your work, like in case of uh, my, uh, engineering professional work, the promoters of my company understand the value and the worth that I work for. And also there are many government agencies I'm working with from where I get a lot of reward and I mean to say a lot of appreciation, reward meaning a lot of appreciation and warmth from the state and the central government utilities that I am working with. So that keeps me going. So if you ask me success, yes, the journey, I've, it's not a very conscious journey. It's something which happened uh, without my knowing. And success is that you actually feel that people have understood the core value of your work. At least some people have understood the core value of your work. Uh, so you feel, yeah, maybe some some kind of success has happened. That's it. Yeah, so I have completed my. Yeah, uh, so we can uh, reframe actually the question. Means uh, the question was uh, wrong from my side. Passion and profession. We could have reframed the question like that. Means both both, both the professions are your passions, engineering and yeah, yeah. Both uh, writing. My, uh, uh, both my. Uh, both my professions are my passions. Are your passions. Uh, that uh, sounds uh, so nice, actually. Making your uh, passion your profession, it sounds uh, so nice. Uh, uh, the national media, international media have um, uh, wrote so many things about you. The Deccan Chronicle says uh, reading five works of Shabon Roy is uh, churning five oceans. Live Mint says uh, Shabon Roy is an innovative author who deals with the human psyche. Psyche. Hindustan Times writes, uh, author Shabon Roy believes in giving hope to his readers. Forbes writes, uh, inventive and mysterious world of literary writings by Shabon Roy. My question is, uh, my question to you is that, uh, what uh, means this uh, innovative, uh, inventive, mysterious, all these words are being used for your writings. Uh, why are like them? Why they are being uh, written like that? First of all, I must tell you that, uh, you know, these are words that others have used for my work. Right, so exactly. So I cannot stand in judgment why uh, they are calling my works uh, innovative, inventive, or mysterious. Maybe uh, the journalists who have read my books and written about them have felt so. But in a plain speaking term, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not a person, I'm not in the class of uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez that uh, 100 years of solitude or Salman Rushdie who writes Midnight's Children 
So I, I don't write surrealist work or I don't write uh, works which have a complete uh, tenor of magical realism. I write a very simple prose and simple poetry and simple plays and Please. which are easily understandable, lucid. All my life uh, I have struggled against, uh, because you see, I, you must understand I write in English among people who speak Bengali. So I have to, I have had the double pressure on my shoulders to be, um, to be understood by people uh, who also do not know fully English. So I wanted to be as lucid as possible. I had to be. So uh, uh, frankly speaking, uh, frankly speaking, but yes, I write about postmodern urban milieu, mostly Calcutta. A lot of people have said that Calcutta features in my uh, books like uh, the Gotham City in a Batman movie, Batman comics. Right. But yes, uh, some people do tell me that uh, mm, somewhere uh, my poetry and my prose uh, touches touch bases with the with the central cord of uh, their nervous system. And you, you see, it feels good and happy to get these kind of adjectives, but I really don't know why they say like that, frankly. That's nice. Uh, as you have said that you have some books on prose, you have some books on poetry and plays, uh, and you have published uh, one book, uh, a technical book uh, with articles on uh, ductile iron uh, pipelines and a uh, framework uh, agreement contracting methodology uh, with two of the co-authors of uh, Roger Choudhury and Boshanto Bera. Yes. Uh, so you have means uh, prose, uh, poetry, plays, and uh, along with the technical books. What made you so versatile in the thinking once, process? What? Once again, you are once again you are using an adjective which I am not using. You see, I must tell you one thing that uh, uh, I am a person, I come from a family which has had interest in uh, natural sciences, literature, arts. So from my early childhood, uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have been interested in geography, history, mathematics, uh, literature, arts, painting, uh, we have been taken to good movies, uh, theaters, dance recitals, although now I don't have much of time to go to dance recitals much. Okay. But uh, my parents took a lot of care to imbibe a culture of uh, interdisciplinary knowledge Right. in me and my sister because of which and I have invested the same energy on my own children that uh, they they start enjoying all kinds of creative thinking. So uh, because of which maybe I love doing uh, all kinds of things and it is also you see the 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 the, the most the greatest philosophical question of man is how to pass time. Right. So if I can pass time by writing a poem, I will write a poem. If I can pass time by writing a piece of prose, I'll write a piece of prose. If I can pass time by writing a conversation, I'll write a conversation. If something strikes that, yes, I must write about desalination technology, I'll write about desalination technology. So these are certain... And uh, one, one thing I must tell you, uh, uh, oh, 98 percent of my 31 years of professional experience, I have spent in environmental engineering. And you would know that uh, today uh, there is a lot of automation in environmental engineering, especially in water sector. Today, I'm deeply interested in smart water. 
so this is another sub because because i am so deeply interested in smart water that i take a lot of interest in understanding computer science and information technology so this is a <clears> new <throat> area which i am trying to develop my interest in so uh, yeah to sum up yes uh, i'm deeply grateful to my parents to um, for their having imbibed in me a culture of interdisciplinary learning and taste uh, yes that comes from there if you say that i am versatile yes that versatility is completely because of my parents it has been imbibed uh, from your very childhood probably uh, yeah yeah in this uh, uh, my next question to you is that in this uh, era of uh, online teaching uh, owing to covid-19 it probably came into existence a bit early and probably with an uh, immature delivery uh, what is your idea of uh, future uh, teaching and learning especially in uh, engineering and uh, uh, professional courses like uh, mba or you can think of hotel management or uh, medical sciences and uh, the other courses where we have lots of lots of uh, lab activities so what is your idea of a teaching learning process how it will be looking like in the future future years engineering and medicine are the two branches of learning where we need lot of project work and laboratory work right so i do not think that online learning is will possibly imbibe the full learning if we do not adopt laboratory work and project work or case study work they have to be done on site they have to be done physically right. possibly we'll have to uh, make smaller batches with uh, social protocols uh to be able to uh, a social distancing protocol sorry i i meant to say so as to uh ensure that uh, uh less number of people in a given physical room are able to participate in the activity with uh, greater distance uh but i do not think that laboratory work or project work or case study work or in case of medicine uh, various kinds of laboratory work can be replaced by online learning i have no idea that they can be replaced that's that's for sure that's for sure right uh, but on hand the uh, practical trainings are very very much uh, required in case of some of the engineering branches and uh, of course medical and uh, and other hotel management kind of professional courses uh, now my next uh, next question to you is that uh, you have been uh, leading the electrical casting for uh, quite a few years uh, as a as a senior vice president uh, it was a, it was a different when we or you did your engineering uh, but the world has changed a lot uh, since last few decades from uh, snail mail to email and then uh, the cradle phones to the uh, the smartphones on smart devices to smart devices from human intelligence to artificial intelligence so my uh, question to my uh, suggest i mean uh, question to you is that how you want to guide uh, the modern generation to be uh, industry ready while they are passing out uh, of their engineering courses and uh, what will you suggest the student to follow to get a, a successful career question is a uh, modern generation how will you guide the modern generation to uh, be industry ready and uh, to have a successful career ahead you see there is no straight cut formula to success exactly. Exactly. i must tell you truly very correct <clears throat> and secondly it is not as if the world changes and you don't change you remain static as the world changes you also change uh, like uh, i started working in 1988 somewhere in the late part of like 1988 so that makes me a very old man it's in some other century some other millennium all right so 
so I have seen a lot of technology changes, lot of technology changes, and I am sure lot of technologies will be changing in the next 10 years, 15 years. But you know, the great part of being a human being is that uh, you change very rapidly with the things that you create. You must not forget that this world that is changing is a creation of the changes that we are making. Right. So we are implicitly changing ourselves without our own knowing. Like uh, <clears throat> when email came, we thought, uh, you will remember, you are of a generation who will remember that when 2000 came, the Y2K problem, the whole world in 1999 was, uh, beset with the oncoming problem of Y2K. Right. But uh, there was a very smooth transition to 2000. All right. Because there was a preparedness among the computer engineers, programmers of that time. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, the world that we change, uh, and today we are uh, thinking of inhabiting Mars, all right. So, uh, and we are talking of artificial intelligence today, but don't forget that Steven Spielberg made a film on artificial intelligence in 1996. Right. So very early. Uh, and his vision was that uh, artificial intelli uh, intelligence will make people, uh, work, work would be, there would be no necessity of work for a human being and human beings will be completely devoted to the work of art and crafts. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, the world that is changing so rapidly and so fast is a making of our own hands. So we do change ourselves too. So it's important that uh, we are aware today. Uh, uh, we are aware today that uh, world will be changing very fast. Even we we nowadays say that uh, children today of ten years old are much more ripe than children of ten years old twenty years back or thirty years back. So what I'm trying to say is. Uh, we are changing too. It's not as if that we are static and we are changing without our own knowing. Right. Uh, one thing I must uh, tell you, uh, sir, that uh, you said uh, in, while describing your 31 or years of experience, you said uh, old man. You should be an aged man. You should not be an old man. You should be <laughs> young man from uh, your heart always. Anyway, I have a lot of questions uh, in the chat box uh, with us. Uh, let me I'm not able to hear you. I'm not able to hear you. I'm not able to hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Now I can okay. hear you. Okay, okay. Sorry. Anyway, uh, somehow it, it got disconnected. The first question uh, from Dr. Devashish Sharkar is that, uh, he is um, the HOD of Mechanical Engineering. How we can help students in improving self-confidence? How we can help students in improving self-confidence? Yeah, uh, I think uh, 
it is significant that uh, I think this uh, question is being asked in the uh, perspective of a classroom. I think right. uh, it is important to encourage various kinds of students because we must understand that uh, all students do not come from a uniform background. Some come from urban background, some come from Mofusil background, some come from rural background. So they are not going to have the same level of, um, I should say, the class consciousness or English proficiency, because these are two things which, uh, you know, if somebody is economically disadvantaged than other in our society, we deeply feel uh, humiliated and insulting. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, we can. Okay. We can hear you. I, because I am, I am sharing my own classroom experience that uh, because in Jadopur University, there were a very good eclectic mix of students from urban background, Mofusil background and rural background. And uh, we did not come from the, from a uniform economic class. So our teachers, uh, we had great teachers in our time. Of course, there are very good teachers now as well. Uh, some of them are my batchmates or batchmates of my uh, senior or junior uh, years. What I'm trying to say is that we had very sensitive uh, teachers who would make us feel very equal in their eyes. They would not differentiate between which kind of class we came from, uh, what kind of English proficiency we had, so I think these are very minor things and uh, to be able to brighten up any idea that one gives uh, during a classroom session, however unimportant or uh, tangential they may be. So I think uh, uh, when you don't differentiate between people uh, in provincial, racial, or various other distinctive terms. You make a level playing field for everybody to grow uniformly. That's very significant. Right. Uh, I think that is a great uh, booster for uh, uh, somebody to grow more confident. Yes, somebody may not know how to speak English well, uh, one could only suggest that uh, why don't you take a orientation class in English in British Council or uh, because there are online classes in British Council on uh, spoken English or there are so many other ways because if one has to go for higher studies uh, some kind of examination they have to prepare for either TOEFL or IELTS so some kind of teaching is required. So English learning is a must for Indian students. So while we must not create a distinctive barrier for people with lower kind of English proficiency, but we should help them in learning the language in a better manner with some kind of encouragement. We can do nothing about uh, the kind of economic class that we come from, but we must significantly understand that uh, education gives us some kind of sensitivity because right. if education does not give sensitivity then it gives us nothing exactly uh, so i must tell you that uh, i have seen among my own colleagues having come from very different kind of backgrounds from me are performing much better than me more adverse conditions because at times adversity becomes uh, 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 a good teacher. Uh, harbinger of inventiveness. Right. 
So I think these are the ways by which you can develop confidence. And of course, I think uh, what another thing is, uh, if people don't teach mechanically, I'll give you an example. When uh, Professor Pijushom used to teach us uh, membrane technology, he used to start with uh, Michael Angelo's uh, design of uh, mm, the dome structure. Sistine in Chapel. Venice, and Italy. All right. Sistine Chapel, so, you want to, want to win? Yeah. Sistine, so, Ch Sistine Chapel, probably. Yeah. yeah. So, Professor Pijushom used to take us to such an innovative world of ideas that we would be drawn away from our class, caste, and various other distinctive factors that boosts up confidence. And he would bring. Um, a lot of uh, photographs because he was a very uh, uh, well-traveled man all across Europe, USA. So he would bring photographs of uh, all those uh, chapels and cathedrals and mausoleums. So, uh, you know, those were such wonderful things for us. In fact, we would uh, do classes, uh, we would attend those classes just because we would know so many things about the world. So I think these things, you know, boost up uh, the ideation capability of uh, students and make us more sensitive to the requirements of being a human. Thank you, sir. But uh, I, we have some more questions with us. Uh, let me let me find out the chat box. Yeah. Uh, One uh, student of ours uh, writes, uh, Renessa Chakraborty, she writes, uh, Sir, I have read your frosted glass of yours and uh, it's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, then uh, Intekhab Hussain, HOD Instrumentation Department, Applied Electronics and Instrumentation Department, he writes, how can we motivate students towards uh, learning and understanding rather than uh, scoring marks only? How can we motivate students towards learning and understanding other than scoring marks only? Uh, <laughs> you see, I'm not a teacher. You all are teachers. So you must know this answer to this question much better than me. Uh, but, pro uh, yeah, okay. but I must tell you that, uh, it, I mean, in case of my own children, uh, I have set very difficult targets for my own children. I have told them that it is important to get marks in the postmodern world as well as learning. So for some reason, yes, uh, my children have made me satisfied because they have learned as well as scored good marks. But I think, uh, you know, there has to be a practical understanding of things. If you do not get good marks, you don't reach anywhere in life. All right. So you have to understand this, that, you know, while we might uh, say that we must uh, migrate people to learning from rather than getting marks. So there has to be a balance. It's important. I think I personally think it is important to meet the aspiration of marks as well as learning. Uh, and uh, and this needs some kind of uh, mentoring you know this needs some kind of mentoring and there the professors or the readers the lecturers the teachers play a very critical role uh, i'll give you an easy example like you have today uh, 10000 rupees in your hand now how do you want to spend it now you can spend it on books, you can spend it on good world cinema, you can spend it on uh, good theater, or you can end up by splurging it on uh, drinking alcohol or going in for drugs or eating uh, food or, I mean, I don't know. All sorts of these things you could do, end up buying flashy dresses and that has no meaning in my life. So what I'm trying to say is, 
you know, you have to draw a balance somewhere. Uh, so I think both are important. To me, both are important. Getting marks is also important because if you do not get marks, uh, the student ultimately cannot uh, sustain, exist in real life. But at the same time, it is possible to uh, learn well, having got good marks. All right. Actually, to showcase uh, yourself, you need uh, some marks. That, 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 that some benchmarks are required, and that is being the marks of the universities. Actually, uh, otherwise, uh, some standardization should be there. So that's why the marks is, marks are so important in life, and it has it is it is becoming more and more important in our life anyway. One of our students have asked one question, Nilanjan Chondo. Sir, provide us uh, some tips so that uh, we can create an effective plan to utilize our studies and learn what's required and mandatory to perform, perform well in future jobs or any project using the upcoming technologies from various interdisciplinary fields, which we need to learn about. Uh, to this, my answer is that the world of, within the educational, my, my experience has been that within what we learn in an university or a college or an institution and what we do in real life in the industry are very different. In India, we do not uh, have modules of learning for industry learning because in the institutions there are no teachers from the industry so this is a great gap in indian technical learning for that matter any kind of learning in india whereas uh, um, if you go to uk usa at least one third or one fourth of the professors are from the industry there are modules of uh, um, um, courses which cater to the industry, which cater to research, which cater to theoretical learning. So there are three kinds of modules. One is theoretical learning, one is for research and innovation, and the third is for industry. So that a student is geared up to learn for future and decide for himself or herself whether he goes into, he or she wants to go to theoretical learning, research or innovation, or industrial field. So for us in India, this is something which we have to bridge the gap ourselves. Students have to know that when they jump into the world of industry, um, it's a new world. But I must tell you, in the industry, all your peers would have gone through the same transition. They would, if you are in a good industry, uh, you would have uh, had definitely uh, hand-holding um, seniors who would guide you through. Because uh, in our, uh, uh, I can give you the example of electro steel castings. We handhold newcomers in every stream of uh, um, learning when they join our group. If some some of your interns come to our um, um, institution sometimes for internship, etc., they will see for themselves that uh, the kind of standard operating procedure that we have for training is world class, simply world class. We train them for technical learning, we train them for administration, we train them for self, health, and safety modules because we have a very big manufacturing unit. So PPM modules, total productive management modules. So it's a very comprehensive module we have. So after a year of training or two years of working in the industry, and we give a lot of freedom to our newcomers. We tell them to go for big, meetings with big level people. We don't, we, we, we actually encourage a lot of failures because we like it that uh, our uh, people, youngsters 
should learn from their own failures because self learning is the best way to teach yourself right very correctly said sir uh let me have the last question we have a very very bad engineering kind of writing over here in the chat box as one of the student writes is it necessary for a student to write 40 pages of assignment without knowing nothing and and lab <laughs> reports it's it's nobody have asked you to know nothing and write 40 pages <laughs> they have the teachers have always asked you to know something and then write anyway uh, we have a question from uh, mr robin uh, kumar agarwal is the hod of management department if technology become outdated rapidly so what's point to work on outdated ones in the same line in the same line as many of our students are here online teaching is a temporary affair for colleges with respect to the syllabus then why to adapt it forcefully sir kindly enlighten the issue under critical thinking fundamentals as i i think i have said one thing uh, it does change fast but the fundamentals of how we design and build systems change at a slower pace it's very important because the fundamentals the way we design and build systems change at a slower pace. piece you see uh, with respect to uh, i must tell you that uh, uh, with respect to civil engineering i can give you an example that uh, today uh, when i started designing structures whether it was of concrete or steel i did it manually and there were long pages of calculations because we were doing cubic equations by hand doing reiterations by hand and slowly the computer applications came the things but you must understand the algorithm of a computer program is based on systems which we utilized manually with certain modifications so while from the outside things are changing very fast you must also understand that the underlying foundations don't don't change very fast you know it's like saying that within a house you may have you may be changing the interior decoration of your house every 2 years but you don't change the foundation of your house every 2 years because the foundation cannot be changed so it is the same with technology and for all practical purposes it is also true that institutions cannot cope up with the changing pace of technology their syllabi cannot be changed at the pace with which technology is changing right uh, there i must also tell you that uh, in foreign universities uh, there is a portion of the syllabi which is for which is variable which is basically for variable technologies coming into the field okay which we don't have it in india so i think if these kind of uh, programs are kept into that is a variable kind of thinking or the strains of thinking that are coming into uh, into uh, a specific stream of uh, subject stream or subject if that is uh, brought up into uh, the syllabi of course so that will be very interesting uh, for students to Um, fully appraise them with the new kinds of thinkings that are going on in the world but uh, you know that institutions will have to adapt to because if the the total part of a syllabi cannot be variable 
only a part of the syllabi can be variable the fundamentals actually remains the same uh, and uh, we just uh, the technologies actually keep on building up on on those fundamentals uh, that's all uh, we uh, would like to uh, thank you sir once again for joining us and, and uh, giving us uh, so much of enlighten enlightenment towards the technology towards uh, with with your nice words with the uh, words of an author we can understand that those were the words of an author uh, we very rarely rarely listen to this kind of words this is very very was uh, sounding very so nice from in in our, our ears i i you, must uh, say I, I must say I'm, uh, we are thankful to the uh, management of the JS Group, the principal of Asansol Engineering College, JS and Techno India Group, and all those people who were behind the scenes, those who are dealing with the technical issues of these uh, meetings, and everyone those who have joined this meeting. I have not taken any of uh, all the questions uh, from the chat box, but relevant ones have been taken. Uh, thank you everyone uh, for joining the session, and last but not the least. Uh, Thank you, Shabona sir, once again. We are looking forward to meet you once again in near future. Thank you, sir. For Just give me a speaking. minute. Uh, yeah. um, thank you so much, first of all, uh, GIS Group and Techno India Group for uh, hosting me on this uh, in this session. It was very enlightening. Um, like uh, I must say that making this presentation for all of you was itself learning a lot. I applied my mind uh, to be able to, and uh, one of my colleagues, uh, Boshunto, was also helping me in this whole effort. So we do a lot of things, you know, within us, because my organization gives me a lot of freedom to, because I am from my office. I'm actually speaking from my office at present. It's not from my residence. So uh, it adds to the experience of all of us. Uh, it has been a wonderful chat. Thank you, Shombit. Thank you, all of you, uh, for all the senior teachers and the other teachers, professors, uh, and the students, uh, mostly. Thank you so much. As we are saying all the good words, I must uh, say the same thing uh, for my office also. They have given us uh, so much of opportunity to work from here also. I am also sitting in my office right now. Uh, okay. It's, uh, okay. Yeah, the college has also allowed me to say, spare, spend time over here so that I can use the AC and, and <laughs> talk to you. And okay. actually, I, I, I was reluctant on the switching on the fan, because the fan can have actually the interference. Thank you, sir. Uh, it was, uh, thank it you, was sir. on the light, lighter part of the thought. But uh, thank you so much for having uh, time with us and uh, spending time with us. And uh, with so nice words of yours, we must uh, learn right. the things. Thank you. It was, it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Uh, we will be meeting you soon once again, if possible, in the future. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, this is uh, Sambit Mandal signing off. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.